What is going on guys? I am all Hunter Medusa and this video is the fourth and final part on what I would have changed in Digimon Adventure Try Symbiosis in, or in order to make it better in my opinion. So since this is the final part, I really want to know what you guys thought about what I changed and if you guys think that had these changes been in implemented into Symbiosis that it would have made the movie better. Obviously you don't have to comment or answer if you don't want to, but I would honestly really like to know what you guys thought about the changes I made. Uh, also, I really quickly want to let you guys know that in this part, I will be expanding and adding on to uh, the scene where the DJ Dustin and uh, Hikari confront homeostasis. And the reason I wanted to tell you guys this before we got into me describing the actual scene is because I will be using um, homeostasis' powers, or the powers that we know of in this scene. So some of you might be, you know, wondering, why are you doing that, or what are homeostasis', what are homeostasis powers since Homeostasis hasn't really done anything to showcase its power besides possess uh, Hikari. And specifically what I am referring to is uh, what Homeostasis did when it first possessed Hikari back when uh, Taichi and Yamato were fighting. So you know obviously what happened was Homeostasis possessed Hikari and then this like you know huge blinding light absorbed the Digidestin and the Digimon. The Digidestin then found themselves in this like blank world and Homeostasis and Homeostasis in Hikari's body then proceeded to act as a guide to the DJ Destin, like showing them visions of the past, like how the Dark Masters attacked Jedi's Order, and of the first encounter, and of the first encounter that Tiny has had with Digimon. So obviously, you know the whole Greymon versus Paramount battle, uh, the whole Greymon versus Paramount battle. Homeostasis was able to show them all those visions of the past, and I will be using those specific powers when I am describing how I would have expanded upon the DJ Destin confront Homeostasis scene. So um. Homeostasis, like, you know, using a blinding, uh, light to, you know, use- So Homeostasis is using light to blind the DDS and taking them into, like, this blank world where it can, like, show them whatever it wants and, like, actually showing the- showing the chosen children visions of the past, I'll be using all those things in this video. So when it comes to, uh, that part, uh, there will be, uh, younger versions of the chosen children in the visions of the past, so I will describe the- the adjustment of the past is either say, for example, young Hikari or younger Hikari. Well, when I am talking about the present Digi I will refer to them as either say, older Hikari, or I would just say, like, you know, their name will find an adjective to it. Also, something else I want to mention is how this would fade to the timeline of the movie, because obviously, the thing that happened with homeostasis happened right before the Digi Destin and their Digimon went, uh, chased after Jessmon into the digital world. So the way I would keep, still keep the scene up in the timeline would be to have it so that when Homeostasis uses that light uh, that absorbs the Digidestin within it, while the, while the Digidestin are in that blank space, time goes by a lot faster, so just like how the digital world originally operated where years could go by uh, in, uh, the, in the digital world but only a day or a couple minutes pass around in the real world, I would think that since Homeostasis is the one creating the space, Homeostasis would be more than capable of controlling how time works within it. And, uh, other, other Digimon or digital entities have proven to be capable of distorting time, like a Pokemon, and since Homeostasis is supposed to be a god <laughs> of the digital world, I would think it would be capable of distorting time at least for a little while. And, uh, just, uh, I, I'm sorry about this until being so long, but one more thing, uh, is that I, uh, I, I feel like I should say this, so just really quickly one more thing. So following the two scenes I discovered in the last video, which were the Hikari and Mako scene I would have added in the tie and Mako scene that changed because of the because of the Hikari and Mako scene. I would mostly keep everything following those scenes, like the DJ Destin beginning their fight against Mekumon and Mako's and Mako's little speech to Mekumon, I would keep most of it the same. The only thing I would really want to add to and expand onto is of course the scene where Hikari and the DJ Destin confront Homeostasis. Now, don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed this scene, like you know. Hikari, like, you know, standing up to homeostasis and the Digi the Destin basically rebelling against homeostasis was an awesome scene. But in all honesty, I felt that this scene should had been cut short and that, it, and that it not only should have been longer, but it should have also had a larger impact on the Digi Destin and Hikari. And I'll explain why. So, like, you know, first off, homeostasis, homeostasis isn't like a random person or being trying to stop the Digi Destin from killing Rekumon. Homeostasis is the entity that chose Taichi and the others to be the Digi to be the Digi Destin or chosen children. Homeostasis is the one who decided why Taichi and the others were chosen over other kids because it's not a strength in each one of them. 
And, you know, that's obviously all explained in the episode where, you know, Holy Sisters stops, like, you know, Tai Chi and Yamato from fighting and, like, uh, like, you know, then, then, because it possesses Hikari's body and proceeds to explain why Tai Chi and the, the others were chosen. And, you know, since Holy Sisters knows who they are, as Holy Sisters is the one who chose them, uh, like, you know, you would expect, like, you know, something more, like, uh, out of it. And, like, not only that, but Holy Sisters is supposed to be this very intelligent and powerful being who governs over, who governs over the real and digital world. So, I feel that Homo Sisters should have, at the very least, made the Digidestin question themselves. And, like, she also, Homo Sisters shouldn't have been, just been going on and on about harm, harmony and stability. And, you know, that's because the way Homo Sisters just kept repeating harmony and harmony over and over again was dumb since Homo Sisters is meant to be this incredibly powerful, intelligent being. So, while it should be trying to convince the Digidestin to follow its goal, it should be smart enough to know that just saying that its way is the best way to go wouldn't be enough to convince the chosen children to change their minds, uh, you know, about killing Rekumon. And, you know, a after all, Holy Sisters is the one who picked them in the first place, and we know that it would take a lot more convincing than just saying sacrifices are needed for Harmony in order to convince the Digidestin to get on board with killing Rekumon. But, uh, yeah, I hope I explained that in a coherent way, and if I did, then sorry guys, and, um, if you guys do enjoy the video, maybe leave a like, and if you're enjoying the content I'm producing, maybe consider subscribing. And if you are already subscribed, then thank you. You guys are awesome. And even if you're not subscribed, just thank you for taking the time out of the day to watch my videos. But uh, with all that being said, let's get into the final part of what I would have changed in Digimon Adventure Tri Symbiosis to make it better. Now, how I would have continued on and added onto the Digi onto the DJS and confront Homie of Season scene would first off be by having it so that. After Hikari finishes her whole speech to homeostasis about how there shouldn't be sacrifices and saying that they won't let homeostasis kill Mekumon, homeostasis, rather than telling the, rather than telling the Digidestin to look at the big picture and then leaving, would instead reply to Hikari and the, and the Digidestin by saying, you foolish children, before a light begins to emit from Hikari, and that then proceeds to engulf all the Digidestin and Daigo, just like when Homeo Sisters first possessed Hikari in order to stop the fight between Taichi and Yamato. So like, you know, all the chosen children cover their eyes at the blinding light and eventually they open their eyes and they see that they're in a blank space of nothingness. Yamato asks, where are we? And then Koshiro then responds, we're likely in the same space that Homeo Sisters took us to before when it first was Hikari. Taichi would probably then yell, we don't have time for this, Homeo Sisters, let us out. After Taichi yells this, Hikari appears in front of the Digidestin, at first the, you know, and then at first the Digidestin think it's homeostasis, as obviously Hikari had up until now been possessed by it. However, Hikari looks up and says, Big Brother, in a confused tone. Taishi responds back to Hikari in a tone just as confused. I could, and then, um, after that I could then see Daigo asking, Are you really Hikari's son? Uh, Hikari then looks at Daigo in surprise before responding with a bit of anger in her voice, Of course I'm Hikari, who else would I be? Uh, Daigo then scratches his head before responding by saying, um, well, it's just that you were possessed by homeostasis a little while ago, so I figured homeostasis would appear, uh, in your form. Hikari then responds a bit embarrassed, Hikari then responds a bit embarrassed at her anger outburst, that's true, sorry for getting angry. Daigo then says it's fine, before Koshiro, uh, says, but Daigo or Nishijima-sensei brings up a good point. Everyone tends to look at him and talk about and talking to the questions, uh, what do you mean, Koshiro san? And then Koshiro uh, then explains, or, you know, Koshiro uh, is Izzy if you haven't watched the. Let, let's just keep going. I'm pretty sure you guys know that Koshiro is Izzy, just like, you know, his Japanese name. And, you know, um, Koshiro then explains, well, it's just that whenever Homo Sisters has chosen to interact with us, it's always been through Hikari san. Homo Sisters always took control of her and only left Hikari san once whatever message it wanted to give us was sent. But right now, it's, uh, it's that Hikari doesn't have control over herself, and Homie Sisters doesn't seem to be done with its message. Mimi then suggests maybe Hikari san, maybe Hikari san's will was too strong for Homie Sisters, and it just couldn't remain in control of her anymore. Koshiro then responds, possibly, and, um, as the, as the Digidestin are pondering this, all of a sudden, they hear the sound of a ball being kicked from behind, being kicked behind them. They all turn around, and when they do, looks of surprise appear on their faces. Taichi then says, what the hell? Why are we here? It's then revealed that the blank space they were in has turned into a soccer field, and right now there are kids who seem- There are kids at the soccer field there who seem to be practicing. 
So it continues by saying, why are we here at our old soccer field? The DD Destin are left in the daze at this, but are quickly broken out of it when the coach of the team yells, okay kids, get ready for the next play we're going to practice, for, that we're going to practice. Then a boy who's next to the coach and who is older than the kids out playing yells, that's right, get into your position, that's right, get into your positions. And a girl next to him who's younger than him yells, good luck. All the, all the DD Destin then turn to look towards the coach and the kids who yelled, and when they do, looks of shock appear on their faces. Sora then says, uh, shocked, it can't be, is that Taichi son and Hikari son? And like, you know, sure enough it is. And like, and ahead of the old idiot that's in, are a young Taichi and Hikari. Koshiro then says, yeah, that's, that's Taichi and Hikari, but they're younger. Uh, the idiot that's in just continue to look on and off when Hikari then says with a somber look on her face. This was after our first adventure in the digital world, right big brother? Taichi then responds saying, yeah, not too long after it either. It was right when school just started up again and the soccer team was hosting tryouts for new players. That seems so long ago. As Taichi finishes saying this, all of a sudden the coach blows his whistle and tells the kids to stop. The DJ Destin then look back to the field to try and see what happened, and from what they can tell, it appears that one of the kids had fallen or had been tripped by one of the other players. The kid in question seems to have gotten a bruise on his ankle due to whatever happened, and the kid then uh, yells out in frustration, Oh man, why couldn't that guy have watched where he was going? As the boy yells this, Hikari and Taichi both then think, That voice, it's... But before I don't... <laughs> Sorry about that guys, but um... Okay, but you know, Hikari and Taichi both then think, That voice, it's... But before either of them could finish their plot, the younger versions of themselves in this scene, uh, unfolding before them, rush up to the kid who had been tripped and went to help him. And then uh, Hikari and Taichi, the older ones, are now like, you know, walking towards the scene in order to get a better look at it, and while the other DDS follow them. The young Hikari then asks if the boy was alright or if he needed help. The boy then uh, looks up towards Hikari before trying to act up and saying, like, you know, no, I'm okay, it's just a little scratch. And he uh, then tries to get up, but as he does so, he puts too much weight on his wounded ankle and is about to fall, but the young Hikari catches him. The young Hikari then uh, says, it doesn't seem like you're okay, come on, let's get you to the bench and I'll fix you up. Uh, the boy then blushes a little before responding with, alright, thank you, um, and as he says this though, he realizes he doesn't know the girl's name, and proceeds to blush even more in frustration since he doesn't know the name of the girl who's helping him. Uh, the young Hikari notices this and giggles, uh, the young Hikari notices this and giggles a little before saying, my name's Hikari, that could be Hikari. Uh, the boy still blushing a little, then either says Hikari like in a tone of awe, or Hikari, that's a pretty name without thinking, causing him to blush even more. The young Hikari giggles and smiles before saying, yeah, that's my name, or thank you. After this, the young Hikari continues on by saying, now let's get you to the, now let's get you to the bench. Um, and, you know, the young Hikari then realizes that she doesn't know the boy's name either. The old Hikari and Taichi, who are watching the scene, then think to themselves, that's right, this was the day... But like, you know, as the uh, as the fight continues on, the boy, uh, the boy that the young Hikari is helping, uh, seeing that she doesn't know his name, then uh, then says, my name is Daisuke, Motomiya Daisuke. And the, old, and the older Hikari finishes with the plot as the young Daisuke says his name by thinking, this was the day that me and big brother met Daisuke. After the young Daisuke said his name, uh, you know, Hikari smiles and says, it's nice, it's nice to meet you Daisuke. And then proceeds to introduce him to Taichi. Uh, Daisuke would probably have an idea of, of who Taichi is, and would be like, "Your big brother is uh, Taichi Yagami, uh, who's who's our uh, school's best player." Hikari would then smile and nod while the young Taichi says, "Nice to meet you, Daisuke." Daisuke would probably be a bit flustered and would be like, uh, "Yes, nice to meet you too, Taichi San. I mean, Taichi Senpai." And as the scene continues to play out, Koshiro says, "It seems that Homeo says it seems that Homeo says Homeo." Stasis is showing us our memories. Joe would then probably ask, but why? To which Koshiro responds, likely to try and sway us to its side. And just like last time, it doesn't seem like we can interact with anyone in the memory, since no one in here has seemed to take notice of us. Mimi then says in an angry tone, that's slow. At, uh, all, the, all the chosen children then proceed to look at Taichi and Ikari, with slight looks of worry on their faces. And the scene then wraps up, with the young Hikari bandaging Daisuke's ankle, wishing him good luck, and then Daisuke returning to play in the game. Once the scene concludes, uh, the DJ Dustin once again find themselves in the white void from before. 
there's a bit of science before there is a bit of science before Mako asks Hika before a Mako asks Hikari-san, Taichi-san, are you guys all right? Uh, Hikari and Taichi then both turn before uh, giving sad smiles and saying, "Yeah, we're okay." Uh, in a somber tone, all the DJs have bit all the chosen children have sad or bittersweet looks on their faces, and um, and you know before Taichi then says angrily like in a soft tone. Homeo sees us. How far are you willing to go? Tai Chi, then tai Chi then glances at Hikari, who is looking down towards the ground with a solemn look on her face. Hikari then looks up towards Tai Chi and gives him a sad smile, to which Tai Chi gives back his own. Then all of a sudden, the DJ doesn't hear a voice say, Come on, tell me! The DJ doesn't turn to see who said it and discover that the uh, void has changed once again. This time it looks as if they're in a cafe. Miu then says, That voice. It was, but before she can finish, Taichi interrupts us uh, saying, Come on, let's go. The Digidus look up at Taichi in confusion, and Taichi then explains, It doesn't look like homeostasis. homeostasis I just really can't say homeostasis, homeostasis can I? Uh, but he says, Homeostasis is going, it doesn't look like homeostasis is going to let us off so, e is going to let us out so easily. So all we can do now is watch what uh, it wants us to see, and hopefully after we do, We'll be able to get out of here. The DJ does a nod and begin to look around for the source of the voice. And uh, Mimi, before the others, eventually spots four girls talking and singing together at a table. As she gets closer, she eventually realizes who the people sitting at the table are and calls for the others to get over here. All the others race to where Mimi is and Sora asks Mimi-san, did you find something? At this, Mimi nods and then points to the table where the girls she's been watching are sitting at. Sora and the other DJ Destin then look to where she's pointing and looks of shock from in their faces. Then uh, Takaru says, that's Hikari-san, Mimi-san, and Sora-san. But, but before uh, Takaru finishes the fight, Hikari interrupts saying, but we're older in this memory than the last one. As the DJ Destin look on, Mimi then says, this was after the Oblumon or the Oboromon came back and Taichi, Yamato, uh, Daisuke, and Ken defeated him. Uh, Hikari-san, Sora-san, and I decided to go out to celebrate along uh, with somebody, but before like Mimi can say anything else, the memory in front of the DJ Destin then begins to unfold as the younger Mimi in the memory says, Yes, come on, you can tell us, Hikari-san. We can keep a secret. Uh, the younger Hikari then replies with, I already told you guys, there's no one who I have a crush on. And then, uh, um, like, you know, after this, uh, the older Hikari and Mimi and Sora watching the season all look on with Summer, summer looks on their faces, and the three of them are thinking, "We went here together along with." Uh, and but before they can finish the thought, the girl whose voice they originally heard then says, "Come on, Hikari-san. There's no way there isn't someone you like." Uh, the young, the younger Hikari then responds to this, saying, "No, I honestly don't, Miyako-san." And Hikari, Mimi, and Sora then finish their thought, thinking, "We went here together along with Miyako-san." The DJ doesn't continue to look on with uh, Hikari, Mimi, and Sora now having sad smiles on their faces. As they, just like Taichi and Hikari, once more recall the good times they had with Daisuke and the others before whatever happened to them happened. And the, the memory continues on with the younger Mimi, with the younger Mimi saying, Eh, I don't buy it, there has to be someone you have a crush on. The younger Sora then adds in, well she doesn't have to have a crush on anyone. The younger Mimi just has like this uh, quizzical look on her face. And Miyako then adds in, uh, well even if you don't like anyone, there are certainly people who like you. Specifically Daisuke-kun. Uh, the younger Hikari then looks up and uh, uh, looks up towards Miyako with a slightly solemn look on her face before saying, Well, I don't think Daisuke likes me anymore. Uh, and then Miyako then gives uh, Hikari a look of surprise and says, Are you kidding? Of course Daisuke still likes you. Hikari then nods no, to which uh, Miyako responds, Well, then how do you explain why Daisuke went all crazy when he found out that you and Takaru went to help Taichi and Yamato against Diablo on? Hikari then looks up to Miyako in confusion. Uh, before uh, Miyako explains that once Daisuke found out that Hikari went to help in the fight against Diablomon, he immediately went, wanted to join the fight and had Miyako open up a gate for him and Ken. Hikari then giggles a little bit and gives a, gives a small smile before saying, I guess he does still like me or or uh, that sounds like something Daisuke would do. Miyako then looks at Hikari and is like, wait a minute, you don't like... But before she can say anything else, Hikari realizing what Miyako was about to say, uh, tells her with a slight blush, oh, uh, what? No, I don't like Daisuke-kun. Mimi and Miyako give uh, Hikari looks of suspicion and, uh, you know, say that sounds suspicious, but they decide to drop it. 
and Miyako then says, well in any case, so long as you don't like Ken, I'm okay with it. Then Mimi responds to this by saying, that's right, what are you gonna, where are you going to tell Ken your feelings? Miyako gets, in, gets embarrassed and says, I'm working on it. From then on, the girls tease Miyako for a little bit before the scene fades away just like before. As the scene fades away, Hikari, Mimi, and Sora all say Miyako son in a soft tone. The void once again changes to another memory, and this time, the Digidestin see a younger Takaru, Joe, and Koshiro running somewhere. The, the Digidestin proceed to follow them, and when they catch up to the younger versions of themselves, Takaru says, This is, but doesn't say anything else. A lady answers the door, and Takaru finishes what he was saying by saying, This is Iori or Cody's house. The lady in question uh, is Cody's mom, and she lets the younger versions of Takaru, Joe, and Koshiro in. The DJs are watching the scene fall, and once, they, once they're inside, they see the younger versions of themselves talking to Iori's grandfather. Iori's grandfather tells them that they can see Iori and wishes them the best of luck. The older Joe watching the scene says, That's right, this was after the battle with Mal and my Otis spawn. And uh, following the fight, Iori went into a bit of a depression. Crusher then says, Yeah, he was really upset about what happened with Oikawa-san. Uh, the DJs then proceed to go into Iori's room and watch as the younger, the younger versions of themselves, the younger versions of themselves proceed to try and help Iori. Iori crying says, "Why Takaru san? Why did Oikawa san have to die?" Uh, the younger Takaru or TK then says with a solemn, uh, then says uh, with a solemn voice, "Iori san," before letting Iori, before letting Iori continue on. Who then says, uh, he finally made it to the digital world, and he met his partner Digimon, and yet he died right there. Why did he have to die? Takaru then says, Iori-san, do you remember what Oikawa-san said before he turned into energy? Iori looks up towards, uh, you know, towards TK and says, yeah, he said that he would materialize his emotions, and that from now on he would watch over the, watch over the digital world. The younger, uh, Takaru then looks at Iori with a sad smile and says, that was his wish. Even though it took him a long time and he had fallen into darkness, he had finally managed to achieve his dream, right, Yuri san Yuri looks up towards uh, Takaru and then uh, Koshiro chimes in. Like you said, he met his partner and managed to see the digital world, right? Yuri uh, then replies, but now he won't be able to have any more adventures in the digital world. Joe then says, I'm not too sure about that. Yuri then looks towards Joe, who says, Oikawa san said that from now on he would watch over the digital world and that he would always be in the digital world. I'm sure that even now his spirit is there overlooking the digital world. Yuri then says, Joe senpai, Koshiro senpai, and you know, Takaru san, thank you, before bursting into tears and crying into TK's shoulder. This memory, just like the others, fades, and then Joe, Takaru, and Koshiro all say Yuri san in a soft, sad tone. After this, one final, one final memory begins to take form, and it's of Ken. The, the digital doesn't watch as Takaru and Hikari's memory of, you know, Christmas begins to take shape, and they see the party that Ken invited all of them to. They see how happy, like, you know, Ken was when they accepted his invitation, and how he was finally starting to get comfortable around Desuke and the others. And he slowly, they also see him slowly becoming who he was before the Digimon Kaiser. And the the Dita Destin see that Ken had finally managed to forgive himself thanks to Wormon, Daisuke, and them. As they see this, the memory of the party they had with Ken and of Yamato's concert concert fades away. <laughs> then all of a sudden, Daisuke, Ken, and Miyako appear in front of Taichi and the others. Only this time, they are the ages they should be. So you know, Daisuke and Ken are the same age as you know Takaru and Ikari, and you know Miyako is one year older. And Iori is obviously the youngest, so he's still gonna be the youngest, obviously, but just older. Uh, Taishi and everyone look towards the uh, towards Daisuke and the others that uh, towards the Daisuke and the others that appeared in front of them. All of them feeling happy seeing their friends, but sad knowing that these aren't the real ones. Mimi, Sora, and Hikari say Miyako-san, while uh, Takaru, Koshiro, and Joe say Iori-san. And following this, Yamato, Hikari, Koshiro, and Takaru say Ken-san. And finally, Taichi, Hikari. Yamato and Takaru say Daisuke Kun. After this, Daisuke, Miyako, Ken, and Yori all smile and extend their hands towards ta uh, ch towards Taichi and the others. And uh, Taichi and the others, like you know, they look in surprise at uh, them extending their hands out to them. At, at Daisuke and the others extending their hands out to them. Hikari then walks forward, confusing Taichi and the others, who say Hikari-san, but Hikari continues on. And, uh, you know, Hikari goes up to Daisuke and the others and slightly extends her, her own hand out to them, almost taking their hands, but before she does, 
Uh, Hikari says, I, no, me and the others have missed all of you deeply. We wish that you could have uh, been with us throughout this whole ordeal, whether that be in times of sadness or happiness. I know that had you been here with us, it would have made everything that happened a lot easier to handle. And we all want nothing more than to see you again. Daisuke, Miyako, Kenyori, I want to be able to see your smiling faces and talk to all of you again. Hikari then looks down and has a solemn expression on her face before saying, But you aren't here right now. You aren't the real Daisuke, Miyako, Ken, and Yuri, as much as I'd like you to be. Wherever they are right now, all we can do is believe in their strength and hope they're okay. All the DJ listeners are just watching Hikari in awe, in awe and uh, Takaru says Hikari chan in, in wonder. After Hikari finishes her speech, uh, Daisuke, Miyako, Ken, and Yuri, or at least the images of them that Homeostasis is showing them, uh, all digitize and disappear. Once they do, Hikari lets out a single tear, and Takaru then asks, Hikari-chan, are you okay? Hikari rubs her eyes and says, I'm okay. Uh, the blank void once more begins to shift, and Taichi yells, what is it this time? Then Homeostasis appears in, in the form of Hikari, not actually, she's not actually taking over Hikari, but making itself appear as a copy of Hikari within the DD Destin's mind. So basically, it's like when Hikari was fighting with Homeostasis in her mind, where there were two Ikari, one being the real one, and the other one being homeostasis. So, uh, like you know, Hikari then says, So you finally decided to show yourself, homeostasis. Homeostasis replies, Yes, and then Kaichi shouts at homeostasis, like, uh, shouts, Homeostasis, why did you show us all this? So this homeostasis says, To show you all why you must leave behind those feelings of camaraderie and friendship you feel with Megumon. All the all the Digidestin are shocked at this, and Yamato then proceeds to shout, What? You say you want us to forget our bonds with our friends, and yet, throughout all these memories you've shown us, they just reminded of they just reminded us of the strong bond we have with Daisuke, Ken, Miyako, and Iori. So how were those memories you showed us supposed to make us want to forget our bond with Pokemon? Homeostasis then looks at Yamato and says, Have you not already discarded your bonds with the other Digidestin? Yamato is surprised by this and responds back with, What? What is that? What do you mean by that? Homeostasis then says, You were right about one thing, chosen child of friendship, or DD Destin of friendship. I showed you those memories in order to remind you of the bonds you share with Motomiya, Daisuke, and the others, and the other DD Destin. However, you and the other chosen children have proven your own hypocrisy. The DD Destin all say what to this, and Homeostasis then proceeds to explain, Children, children, you say that Mekumon is your, fr your friend and that you will protect Mekumon. That it's not as simple as I make it out to be and that there shouldn't be sacrifices. However, what of the other chosen children, your friends? None of you know where they are or what happened to them. You were unable to protect any of them because of that ignorance. Throughout this whole ordeal, your attempts to help or find your so-called friends have been next to none. And as you just proved now when you decided that stopping Mekumon and saving the world was more important than finding your friends, you are more than willing to leave and sacrifice the bonds you share with the other to be destined for the bigger picture. So tell me, chosen children, how is the decision you made at the start of this journey to save the real and digital world over searching for your friends any different than what I am asking you to do now in order to save the world? All the all the Destin are silent for a while, but Hikari eventually says, We haven't left behind or sacrificed or sacrifice their bond with Daisuke and the others. They're still here within us, giving us strength and pushing us forward. It's true that we don't know where they are, but if they were in our situation, while they too would be worried for us, they would know that they would have to focus on the task at hand. But they would also never stop believing in us. They would believe in our bonds and in our strength, just like we believe in them. That belief we have in them and our bonds is proof that we haven't left behind our uh, bond and feelings for our bonds and feelings for Daisuke and the others. We haven't sacrificed them or forgotten about them because our memories of them and the ties we have with them are still within us. Wherever they are right now, we'll believe in their strength and the bonds we share with each other. The DJ doesn't then all proceed to not encourage response. Uh, Yamato then says, that's right, and we know that Daisuke and the others are okay. Daigo and Nishi or Nishijima-sensei and Maki or Himekawa-san told us so. Homeosis then says in a mocking tone, and you really believe they were telling the truth? All the all the and then turned to Daigo and Yamato then asked Nishijima Sensei, what you and uh, Maki told us was true, right? Daigo only looks down towards the ground to which Homeostasis chimes in. If he won't tell you he's lying, then I'll show you. Once again, the Dijidesan are taken into another memory, this time Daigo's memory of when Yamato went to confront Daigo and Maki. The Dijidesan all watch what happened between Yamato and Daigo, and once Yamato leaves, they all see that after Yamato left, 
Daigo got angry at Maki for not telling them the truth. Once the memory ends, uh, uh, like, you know, they, once the memory ends, all they did is then, uh, turn to Daigo, and Taichi says, Nishijima sensei, you. But before he can say anything else, Yamato interrupts, yelling, You knew they were missing, and yet you chose to lie to us. And, uh, you know, Yamato then proceeds to punch Daigo and is about to continue to attack him, but it's stopped by Taichi, who says, uh, like, you know, Yamato, and then Yamato responds with, Nishijima says, uh, Daigo lied to us, like, you know, about our missing friends and had kept information from us. Why should I stop, Tai Chi? Kaji then responds, uh, with, Right now isn't the time to be fighting amongst ourselves. We have to get out of here and save Miku Mon. Yamato is still angry but calms down, and Daigo then says to the, then says to the predecessor, I'm sorry we didn't tell you. Dusky and the others are your friend and you had every right to know. If Maki saw him fight, it would be best, uh, not to tell you, fearing that it would put too much of a burden on you. The video doesn't don't respond to what Daigo said and turn to face Homeo Sisters again. Homeo Sisters then says, Chosen children, unfortunately I cannot keep you here much longer. But I hope you make but I hope you make the right decision before it's too late, and I'll leave you with this. Leave such feelings of teamwork behind which will struck the bigger picture. Following this, the Digi Destin are no longer uh, within the blank space that Homeo Sisters had them in and are back in the real world. All of them now with uh Second thoughts about what they should do about Mekumon and Hikari trying to keep onto the faith that she has in Dusky and the others. At this point, their Digimon and Jessmon and Mekumon have been fighting the whole time and are about to go to the digital world just like in the movie, so the Digidustin have to rush up to catch up with them. And uh, yeah! Uh, that's then how I would would have expanded, uh, expanded uh, the scene where D the Digidustin confront- where the Digidustin and Hikari confront homeostasis. Now, this scene, I, now this scene, I feel would somewhat change how the how the DJs and feel about killing Mekumon, as Homeo was able to at least leave an impact on them. I don't think they would be something like you know, oh yeah, let's kill Mekumon. They'd obviously still want to try and save Mekumon, but I think that when it came to the point where Mako tells them to kill Mekumon, it wouldn't just be Taiji saying, it wouldn't just be Taiji that would change a part. And I could see almost like all of the DJs now questioning themselves about what they should do. But uh. I think ultimately, for the most part, everything after the DJS and confronting Homeo Sisters would be the same. Like, the only thing that I would change after it would be Hikari's, like, setup to her Dark Days Evolution. And the only thing I would change about that would, uh, to be, would, uh, the only thing I would change about Hikari's setup to her Dark Days Evolution would be to have her have more lines of dialogue after Tai Chi's supposed death. So, like, I would still keep all the lines she has, like, when Tai Chi, uh, almost supposedly dies, but I would add in something else, like, uh, like Hikari saying, you know, big brother, you said that everything would be fine, that I just have to believe in you and the others, but that was a lie, wasn't it? But, um, yeah, ultimately, that is the final thing that I would want to change or add into Symbiosis, so this is going to be the end of the video. So, thank you all for watching, and, uh, just thank you for sticking with me throughout this entire series. Uh, it, it's just been really... I, I'm really glad I, I did this because like I feel like uh, uh, like that a lot of people have like a lot of uh, problems with symbiosis and I just kind of wanted to get my own opinion out about how I would try to make it better and you know now I've now I've done that so uh, leave your thoughts in the comments down below tell me tell me if you know if you think that this would make symbiosis better but uh yeah once again thank you all for watching I'm Alejandro Mendoza and I, I will see you later bye. Also, now that I'm done with this, I should get on with making that theory video that I talked about a while ago, shouldn't I? Yeah, I'm going to start doing that. Bye, guys.